My country applauds the Southern African Development Community, the African Union, and all who stand with us in demanding the immediate and unconditional removal of these illegal sanctions. Those that impose illegal sanctions must heed this call and lift them now. In the advent of the new dispensation, President Mnangagwa reiterated the long Zanu PF standing stance on land. While responding to questions on the World Economic Forum and other platforms, the president said, even though the imposers of sanctions wish to reverse the land reform, that was not going to happen. They are still of the opinion that uh, the land reform which we carried out it was not necessary, which we disagree. It was necessary because the land reform is premised on uh, uh, equalizing the situation in the country where 70% of our land was in the hands of about uh, 6,000 uh, farmers from Britain and 30% uh, of our land was in the hands of 8 million Zimbabweans. But that is now behind us. We have done our land reform program where 363,000 uh, families have now been settled on land. And uh, we are saying to them the land issue is behind us. The land reform is behind us. We are only consolidating. So I tell you, I was not. No, so good. Our agriculture must now be modernized, must now be mechanized. But now make sure that much of our agriculture is under irrigation. Enough hectares in under irrigation to go on a vegetable. No strategic reserve grain. The unwavering stance on land by the Second Republic infuriated the American neocolonialists. On 4 March 2019, as has been the norm for the past two decades, the American President Donald Trump extended sanctions by another year. These sanctions continue to hurt ordinary Zimbabweans in many spheres of their lives. Yeah, the English police can I want to change the Uti is just so they not as of our America's map way is what in Tanjan. Imiti Gasai Tolega Shangova is Mbapo and why I never is me to heal this. Yonke is a moyes a my Uti is Uzi, my lines of credit. I was Uzi. A country's transport system is a key enabler in the entire economy. The American neo-colonialists knew this when they put embargoes on the national railways of Zimbabwe. Prior to 2002, it's in NRZ, we used to move um, 12 million tons of uh, cargo a year. And uh, we've seen this figure decline uh, to as low as uh, 2.6 million tons uh, that was moved in 2009. And uh, we believe um, Sanctions uh, played a significant contributory factor towards this decline. Part of the challenges came from uh, our in inability to establish uh, letters of credit. Uh, prior to 2002, um, we, we never wanted to procure spares because most of most of the spares that we need for, to maintain our equipment and our infrastructure is imported. We used to establish letters of credit and then. Um, on, on that basis, would then get supplies. Uh, with sanctions, it was no longer possible to have uh, LCs. Uh, over the years, uh, the machinery around here has been dilapidating due to challenges we have had on space uh, availability. Zidera, the sanctions law passed by the American Congress, United States. Congress stipulated that any financial institutions, global financial institutions, like the IMF, in which they are a shareholder, and in which also Zimbabwe is a shareholder, the World Bank, in which 
America is a shareholder, and also Zimbabwe is a shareholder. The African Development Bank, although called African, comes under the dictates of the United States of America. The law provided that Zimbabwe should not gain any credit. No financial access should be given to Zimbabwe from any of those institutions, IMF, World Bank, and the African Development Bank. Due to America's control of international financial institutions, Zimbabwe was denied international capital. Because of sanctions, the, the country has no access to international capital, especially to the traditional markets of Europe and the United States. That was closed and it has been closed for the past 20 years. That has been the most negative impact on our country and on our economy. No access to capital. So Zimbabwe is growing and managing on its own resources. In other words, lifting itself by its own bootstraps. That is the situation Zimbabwe finds itself in. Some financial institutions that did business with Zimbabwe were fined heavily by the American Office of Foreign Asset Control, OFAC. One such institution is the Standard Chartered Bank that was fined 1.1 billion American dollars and now Standard Chartered is closing all its operations in Zimbabwe. Besides imposing heavy fines, the American government intercepts money destined for Zimbabwe. This actually has gone to the extent that even uh, payments uh, from uh, offshore uh, customers, sometimes uh, some of our exporters arrange that we be paid by uh, their own buyers uh, offshore. These are intercepted. Only last week, for example, with the payment that was coming through for 137,000 US dollars, that was again intercepted by a corresponding bank for one of our local banks. And uh, it's been held. And uh, we're now having to find a way of how that money can still be paid. And these interruptions um, affect us greatly because uh, this is money that, that by now we could have paid for spares or for. Um, equipment that we need. Sanctioning, you know, companies, all the major, major, you know, state enterprises are under sanctions. Our products are under sanctions. Only recently, you know, some fictitious allegations have been made against our diamond industry, claiming that our diamonds are produced through false labor. What nonsense? We have never, never, never had a situation where anybody is forced to work in Zimbabwe. Zimbabweans are hard working, they love working, they want to be employed, and the very same people who say there is a high degree of unemployment in Zimbabwe, then turn around and say there is forced labor in Zimbabwe. What a contradiction. If there are so many people who want to be employed, why are you forced them? Despite all that, the Americans continue to deny the assumptions on Zimbabwean economy. It's, it's, it's not true. Zimbabwe has not been able to access a cent from the capital markets of Europe and the United States since 20 years ago. It's a fact. Before that, Zimbabwe was able annually to gain access to 3-4 billion United States dollars from capital markets of Europe and the United States. That door was closed by the sanctions. You need also to understand that some of the sanctions are, should we say, written and some are de facto. Meaning, they will say anything that there are no sanctions. But the reality is that they don't trade or they don't do business with, with Zimbabwe. Prior to 2002, uh, we had uh, a lot of support from the original equipment manufacturers. These people who supplied us the locomotives, the, the signaling equipment and so on. Whilst uh, they do not say so openly, but we noticed 
that uh, after 2002, we're no longer getting the technical support, we're no longer getting the training that they would afford to our staff, we're no longer getting the uh, updates in terms of maintenance instructions, maintenance practices. And uh, this again uh, resulted in loss of our te technical capacity um, and uh, also failure to keep uh, up to date with the latest technology from some of these manufacturers. Again, this contributed to the um, poor state of our equipment and our infrastructure. The NROZ is not the only key entity in Zimbabwe that was affected by the sanctions. Numerous sanctioned entities have crumbled under the weight of these illegal sanctions. CSC is a monster. It can't be done overnight. It hasn't worked for a long time. There's a lot of refurbishment to do. Some assets are in good condition. The foundations, the infrastructure is pretty good. But the heart of, of the operation, the engine rooms, there is not one compressor working amongst the whole of the CSC. They're outdated, they need to be replaced. One key entity is the Zimbabwe Iron and Steel Company, better known as Zisco Steel. Zisco used to export products to South African customers in US dollars, which is the international medium of exchange. The invoicing was done by the Minerals Marketing Corporation of Zimbabwe, MMCZ. However, on 25 July 2008, the President of America issued an executive order blocking properties of Zisco and MMCZ. The British also applied the same sanctions on Zimbabwe. Due to this executive order, the following happened. Some Zisco fans and MMCZ fans in US dollars were frozen as of 25 July 2008. Any U.S. dollar receipts which were deposited in Zisco's U.S. dollar accounts were frozen. No payments could be effected through Zisco's U.S. dollar accounts. MMCZ could not invoice Zisco's exports as MMCZ was also specified by the executive order. What you must note is that internationally, the U.S. dollar and the euro are the best convertible currencies. The South African rand is not easily convertible, hence Zisco could not switch to rands. Moreover, South African suppliers and customers who comply with the American, European and British restrictions stop doing business with Zisco. Most software and hardware originate from the West, like technology needed to run the bar road mill comes from Sweden. This suddenly became unavailable. The simple result Zisco collapsed. Another serious negative effect caused by the sanctions on Zimbabwe is the killing of the country's image on the international market. Mainly on the banking side with misconceptions about the country. They consider Zimbabwe a pariah state. That is a fact. Because of our perceptions uh, of country risk, which I believe the uh, sanctions are also contributing to, uh, facilities are very expensive on the market. And uh, it, has, it has been a challenge for us as an RZ to structure um, those uh, facilities where we can buy uh, replacement equipment. The cost of money is always uh, an issue uh, whilst we're still discussing, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, the perceptions of country risk, no matter where we source the money from, will always come in in terms of the, of the cost of money because they always uh, put a uh, premium on uh, that cost of money that is based on the perceived country risk. The assault on the image of Zimbabwe by both the international and local private press has been relentless and littered with fake news. The main challenge is the negative press and people not investigating correctly. Uh, fake news. There's been that negative press goes internationally, not just just locally, and that that's our biggest challenge. Is uh, Instead of something positive what we're doing, people are trying to find the negatives of what we're doing. And that, that hurts, not just us, but other investment coming into the country. They see the negative press, which is not true. Fake news, as some other president likes to call it. And uh, 
that's that's really hurt us is people not understanding the story we've we've taken on a big challenge here uh, we knew it was a big challenge this company hasn't worked for almost two decades uh, that hasn't scared us we knew that when we took it on but the issues the negative issues in the press was not what we were expecting and that's that's caused us a lot of problems both or mostly for some of my management and uh, my family because we get a lot of bad issues in uh, social media and the printed press which are not true. This kind of sanction is imposed by Zimbabweans on Zimbabwe and enhances further the negative perception on the country. We as people of Lupane, we are being affected by these sanctions. I will talk mainly of uh, what we have here. We have um, furniture. We wish they were investors. Because of this negative publicity, they don't come here. Uh, we are being uh, told there is violence in the country, people are abducted, people are, we, we don't experience that. It can be one or two cases. It's not all over the country. We are just in a peaceful uh, district, peaceful Zimbabwe. The neo colonialist hide behind human rights so as to justify their illegal sanctions. But the amazing thing is that the very same people who are now talking about human rights never raised human rights issues. When human rights were being violated, the left, right and center by the Smith regime and, uh, uh, and the others. adage says one of the greatest tricks the devil has ever played is to convince the world he does not exist this is the story of the evil American sanctions the Americans would insist the sanctions are targeted at few individuals sanctions are actually a form of economic warfare that came to destroy our economy in Zimbabwe yes they have said that they are targeted sanctions but if indeed there was targeted sanctions, I think they missed the target. But the people who have the problem are the people at the grassroots, who will fail to be financially independent, who will fail to be included in financial activities. This idea that sanctions are of no effect because they are only targeted a few individuals, if they are of no effect, why are they having sanctions against us? Why not leave them? And I think America is just playing the big brother issue. They know we are not like them. We are not going to Iran. We cannot just go out. We to kill our own citizens. So it's high time to do our own. The effects of the so called targeted sanctions are spread across every value chain. Targeting one key institution can have ripple effects on the whole system. For example, targeting NRZ can also affect Zisco Steel, Wange Colliery, and even the ordinary Zimbabwean traveler. The railway offers affordable transport, cost effective transportation, but because of our lack of capacity, we see that our, our customers are struggling to uh, compete in terms of export uh, competitiveness on, on export markets. At the end of the day, sanctions are killing ordinary Zimbabweans. Kataraz, Jera, document Rao Ravano Shandisa, Ravaka Nyura, Rakaunza, my sanctions. You know, total sanctions are to Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe means Zimbabweans. And we are the Zimbabweans. And those who are said to be listed are not even affected by these sanctions. Why? It's very clear, taking into a look to the former president. The Sanctions. At Shakwani Sikuti, Kwani Siku 
sanctions Hapana mudzimai we muzimbabwe usina kuvakachirwa nema sanctions ayembabake Weda uri MDC uri Zando PF uri party kana uri ku church yes wakashikirwa nechipuka ichi chinonzi ma illegal sanctions Mama ikuti vete ma projects hapo ma sanctions am kukoneja nokuti zvinhu zose zvinova kule zvinova kuje kwe Zimbabwe chinowe ma sanctions undowi unhu unovulaya ngendlela yangkona osekusenza kala ngakona ma sanctions asesiza mubunengi kwawo sesize siswele kuti sibambe ngapi is Zimbabwe ni nyika inoted roko zipati but is into the zones and is true kujana mu Zimbabwe that is chikwani sikuti tuzuzuke kunze kwenyika kambo ka ma sanctions zvakare mvura chaiyo yekubikisa yacho wano wakuchena mvura ine china nekuti hurumende haikwani sikudrina ma blowers anokwana kana kuchenesa mvura haikwanisi saka ma illegal sa Ziwa kuti ma Not only have sanctions affected prices of commodities and service delivery, they have also affected the availability of basic commodities. One of the biggest effects of the economic sanctions in Zimbabwe is the rise in unemployment rate. We also have seen our staff numbers decline from uh, over 10,000 uh, uh, staff uh, or 10,000 employees that we used to employ to the current 4,300. We were forced to do, to do this uh, because of the declining revenue base. And uh, we had a combination of uh, having to retrain some of the employees and uh, also having to refresh recruitment uh, so that uh, we could manage the numbers. Over the years also, the operations here have been scaled down to meet the given weight loads. Uh, years back, we used to have a, a skilled worker manning every machine which you see in the background. Uh, but now, some machines are unmanned and others are uh, due to the scaling down of operations which you have had. In fact, uh, to be able to afford uh, the, the wage bill, we should have uh, reduced further, maybe to below 3,000. But uh, our cost structure, our operational structure is such that um, we cannot go beyond a certain numbers because some of our costs are fixed. Um, our infrastructure, whether we move one train or ten trains, there's a certain basic minimum maintenance that we have to do. And we have to carry that, uh, that stuff. So this has translated to us accumulating salary arrears because we've not been able to pay um, the staff their full wages due to the uh, declining um, revenue base and uh, we've accumulated over 100 million salary arrears. So I'd say that at the end of the day, um, the employees who are perhaps part of the citizen 
the sheep of Zimbabwe are the ones who bore the branch of the